It is election day in America. Voters across the country are heading to the polls to choose who they want to represent them in local and state and federal offices. And obviously the biggest race of this election cycle involves who will be our next commander in chief, our current vice president or the previous president. And your KSN news team has coverage today. Alexis Padilla and Mally Jones are keeping an eye on how voting is going right here in Wichita, while Eddie Randall looks at some of the issues you'll see on the ballot. And we begin with Mally Jones live at the Eastminster Presbyterian Church. Mally, you just spoke with some Sedgwick County election or the Sedgwick County Election Commissioner. What's she saying about voting so far? Yeah, Laura Ringwater tells us that everything has been going smoothly this morning. We've been here at Eastminster for about an hour and there hasn't been a line at all so far since we have been here, of course. Rainwater did say that that could pick up during the lunch hour from about noon to one when people are on their lunch break, of course. And as of 1030 this morning, there has been about 35,000 election day voters come through the polls, which is about 8,000 an hour. Rainwater says they are processing voters well and quickly. She is still hoping to reach a 70% voter turnout overall. But I think uh, we've kind of had a shift this election season where a lot more voters voted early, which is a good thing. It has really helped reduce the lines here on Election Day. Rainwater expects those lines to start picking up again at about 3 o'clock this afternoon in the evening. And she tells us the first report is going to be out around 715 to 730. That is going to be the mail-in ballots and the early in-person in -person votes as well. Now let's head over to River church where Alexis Padilla is. Alexis, how's it going over there? Hey, Mally, it's been a quick and smooth process over here at Riverside Christian Church. Right now, there is no line over the last hour since we've been here. The longest we've seen is just six people waiting. For the most part, it's been a steady flow of people just walking in, showing their ID, and then casting their ballot. Although the supervising judge does expect things to pick up over the lunch hour. Their biggest rush happened when polls opened at 6 this morning. She says lines were wrapped around the building. Even then, the average wait was only 20 minutes. She says the wait may not be as long as you expect. You see a line, please stay because we're going to get you through as fast as we can. And it is a relatively a very quick process. You have until 7 o'clock tonight to cast your ballot. You must go to your assigned polling location. And as long as you are in line by 7, you will be allowed to cast your ballot. Here for you in Riverside, Alexa. KSN News 3, Mike, back to you. Well, thanks so much, Alexis. And if you choose to vote by mail today, it's your last day to return your ballot. They must be postmarked by today and arrive at your county election office by Friday. But election officials, including the Kansas Secretary of State, say that at this point, do not mail them back. You can hand deliver them to your election office or any polling place in your county. And you can also put them in a county owned drop box. There are 14 of those boxes scattered around Sedgwick County and the KSN digital team has put together an interactive map so you can see what part of the city they are in. And those boxes won't be locked until seven o'clock, which is the time when the polls close. And we want to learn who will be the 47th president, and that race remains extremely tight. NBC's Jay Gray is in Pennsylvania with the latest. Well, it has already been a busy day at this polling site, which happens to be the Museum of the American Revolution. So much of our nation's history, the history of our democracy inside this building. And on Election Day, they make history here. It is a place where voters come when it opened early this morning. There was a line almost immediately. We've seen a steady flow of voters coming through here. A lot of people who tell us they just want to be a part of the process on Election Day. We know that there were so many early voters, so many mail-in ballots, but many of the people that we talked to say, no, they wanted to wait and they wanted to take part in the process on Election Day. It is a race that is really tight, as tight as we've seen in quite some time. The final NBC News national poll showing that uh, both Vice President Harris and former President Trump have 49 percent support with only 2 percent undecided. Now, last night the campaigns ended for Harris. It was here in Philadelphia, a star-studded rally that included Lady Gaga, Oprah Winfrey, I am, and her 
final pitch to voters was get out there and do your part and we'll win. It was pretty much the same message that we heard from former President Trump. He spent a lot of his time here in Pennsylvania yesterday, but wound up in Grand Rapids, Michigan, also a swing state, uh, telling voters that they have the potential to win this thing if they can just get out the vote. So it wasn't so much winning over new voters or undecided voters as it was in that final pitch, just making sure that their supporters get to the polls. We expect to see the continuous flow of voters here. Uh, lunchtime, we'll probably see a line. And then in the evening, once uh, work is over, we expect the line to stretch very far. There's a lot of interest, a lot of people anxious to vote in this election here in Philadelphia and across Pennsylvania, and a lot of eyes around the rest of the country watching to see what exactly will happen here in Philadelphia. I'm Jay Gray, NBC News. Well, back here in the Sunflower State, Donald Trump appears to have an edge amongst Kansas voters. A recent poll by the Docking Institute of Public Affairs found that of the registered Kansas voters who plan to cast a ballot in the general election, 48 percent would prefer Donald Trump, while 48, 43 percent would vote for Kamala Harris. Now, back in 2020, Trump beat Biden by 15 percent of the vote here in Kansas. And in 2016, he beat Hillary Clinton by 20 percent. And the last time Kansas's six electoral votes went to a Democrat was back in 1964 for Lyndon B. Johnson. A two Sedgwick County Commission seats are up for grabs. In District 2, the only Democrat on the board, Sarah Lopez, is being challenged by former Wichita City Councilman Jeff Bluebaugh. And in the third district, it's Stephanie Wise and Celeste Russett. One of them will replace David Dennis, who chose not to run for another term in office. And candidates aren't the only races that you're going to see on the ballot. Many cities and counties have important questions for voters to decide. And our Eddie Randall is here to talk about school bonds that will be that will be only uh, on many ballots in our region. Hey there, Eddie. Hey, good afternoon, Mike. And there are a couple of bonds up for a vote. Let's start with the $20 million bond that Rose Hill voters will decide for USD 394. According to the superintendent, Chuck Lambert, the youth in the di district have been at a disadvantage for the last two years following the failure to pass the last school bond. He says a yes vote this time would give students better opportunities to succeed. Superintendent Lambert also believes adding storm shelters and secure entrances to the bond will help it pass. A big question from voters is how much will this cost? The district says taxes will only increase if residential property values go up. There was a pretty good gap between yes and no's. I think one of the things that we've tried to do is this time focus on the safety and security is a big part of this project, which maybe wasn't as much last time. We've also tried to be as transparent as we can, trying to show exactly what it will do for our students, what it'll do to people's taxes, making sure we show all of that. If the bond passes, it would also mean new culinary arts and science classrooms and sports fields. The Beloit School District is asking voters to approve three bonds. The first costs $5 million and would replace the boiler system at the elementary school and replace the rooftop units at the junior senior high school. The second is for $3.9 million and would build an ag center with a STEM classroom. The third bond is a million dollars and fixes the track and tennis courts. Now, this is the second school bond vote in Beloit this year. Vo voters rejected one back in April, and the district says if this one fails, it will have to take money away from education to fix their worst problems. Voters in Ellenwood School District are deciding whether to pass an $8.5 million bond. The project adds new secure entries at the elementary, middle, and high schools and improves the HVAC systems and roofs. If it passes, the owner of a $100,000 home would have to pay an extra $225 in property taxes each each year. We will be watching the results of these bond votes closely. And of course, we're going to bring you the numbers and results on KSN.com and on KSN News at 10. All right, back to you.